I'm Patrick Gibbs, and I have come out to Creation Flame out near Austin, Texas, and I'm here with James Slade of Creation Flame, who has helped build the Life Track tractor and the compressed earth block press that are behind us. So, James, uh, what what's your experience with these two machines? Well, it's been pretty amazing thus far. Very educational, and uh, I find that with these machines, that pretty much anybody can build them if you know, they put the effort forth. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your experience before you started building these? What was your experience with machine shop work? Very limited. I mean, like, I'd taken some mechanics back in school, like high school, mm -hmm. and uh, small engine repair, things like that, but it had been many years. I, I pretty much come from an IT computer world. Mm -hmm. And I just decided that after watching Marchin's TED Talk mm -hmm. back around March of last year, 2011, mm -hmm. that it was something I needed to do. So I quit my day job, grouped up with a few folks, got some funding, and uh, learned to weld and fabricate steel. And we produced the OSC Liberator compressed earth block machine. Uh-huh. And you were the first ones? We were the first ones to replicate any of the GVCS outside of the factory farm. All right. And had you been there before? Um, not when I started, no. Okay. But after we built it, I finally went up there and got to meet Marchin. Uh-huh. And what else did you do during that trip? Um, actually, my second trip up there was in November, December, and I helped do some documentary work on the CEB assembly, the life track assembly, and there's a soil pulverizer attachment that we did assembly videos of. Mm -hmm. um, I also helped take the life track from what's called prototype three to prototype four, meaning it used to have straight arms, and now we have bent arms to bring the load in quicker or closer. Mm -hmm. um, and we changed how the wheels work. The old wheel design wasn't quite effective as far as the motors. Were, were, that were being used, so we got much larger motors, and uh, Marchin had developed these quick attach plates, so I kind of worked on that, um, and that's pretty much my, my second journey there. Mm -hmm. Since that time, we have come back here, Marchin loaned us another Prototype 3, we brought it here and turned it into Prototype 4, as you can see. Mm -hmm. We've expanded upon the uh, quick attach wheels even further. Mm -hmm. So there was a problem with the shaft slipping, but we've resolved that. We've put in at least 100 hours worth of testing now. We've driven it at least 12 to 13 miles. Mm -hmm. Lots of lots of typical use, and it's holding up really well. Um, okay. And who else in who else has as, as much experience as you working with LifeTrack? As far as I know, just marching. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, there's Jose that's up there now. He's done some work with Marchin on it. Mm -hmm. Outside of that, I don't know who would have more experience actually building and operating these. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been a few people who have driven them around, but right. I think I've probably got the most at this point. Was Brianna part of fabricating life tracks? Some, I think I heard maybe she was more focused on other... She was more stuff. on the CEB. Like, she kind of brought the CEB to this version. Okay. Um, and she's been working on the iron worker. She might have done some work on the life track, but mm -hmm. I heard the other day that the first time she ever drove one was just like just recently. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Cool. And um, so we talked about what I've been up to in Argentina, mm -hmm. and that we were looking for someone to teach there. And so what? Um, as far as folks in Argentina who are looking forward to at some point building. A life track and other tools from the GBCS and Argentinifying them, as we've been talking about over there. Um, how do you imagine? How could you participate in that? Well, I could share my experience with that project um, on what I find works and doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of ideas for upgrades and changes to make this more user friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, going from prototype to actual, you know, production model. Um, I have a lot of information as far as, you know, what 
what I find really works well and what doesn't. Like, you know, we would have to get away from this chain design for tracks mm -hmm. and either go with a, a series hydraulic system for the wheels or come up with a new design for tracks. Um, yeah, engine works, you know, it could be pretty useful seeing what we have on hand there and what we can make work and mm -hmm. you know, at least save some pain and heartache for learning the wrong way, uh -huh. or tuition, as some friends call it. <laughs> I paid the tuition on it to some degree, right? so I could save some cost and effort. And you mentioned the difference between metric and U.S.? Yeah, it, you know, everywhere else in the world is on metric, we're still on imperial, so being able to help build one of these under the metric would help everyone else, mm -hmm. not just the U.S., cool. and that's, that's a big thing that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And if there was money available, uh, if your expenses could be covered, you would be up for going to Argentina? Absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. And you, you, actually, I got to you via an email that Pablo sent you. Correct. That you responded to, so I think Pablo is probably the only one right now who knows your name, but other people will learn your name later this week. Awesome. I imagine. Well, you know, even if it doesn't work out that way, I'm still pretty available. Mm -hmm. Even here, I can help work remotely, mm -hmm. Skype and email and pictures and so on and so forth. Yeah. All right. Yeah.